In April of 2018, there was one of those rare moments of total bipartisan consensus that ought to make you very nervous. Everybody, Democrats and Republicans, political operatives, the investigative journalists you see on TV, they were all in total agreement on one point. The United States needed to bomb Syria immediately. We needed to hate Syria and its leader, President Bashar al-Assad. Now, they never quite explained why he was so bad. But in April of 2018, they gave us a hint. They told us Assad had targeted his own people with chemical weapons, including chlorine. And for that, we were assured, the United States, along with a coalition of the willing, needed to punish Syria. Now, we raised doubts, obvious ones, about that story at the time. For one thing, there was no evidence that a chlorine gas attack had actually happened. None. At the Pentagon, the defense secretary claimed that there were, quote, a lot of media and social media indicators that either chlorine or sarin was used. Wait a minute, we said media and social media indicators? You're the military. Shouldn't you have actual evidence before we bomb a sovereign country? Shouldn't we at least know that they committed the crime we're killing them for? Days after the alleged poison gas attack, we asked that same question on the show. Before we go to war, are we sure all of this is real? Do we really know that Assad was behind the gas attack? It's not a defense of Assad, but it's an obvious question. How could we know that conclusively so soon after the attack happened? So you're not supposed to ask questions like that, super obvious ones like, do we know this really happened? For the crime of asking that question, pretty much every media organization in the country followed the Pentagon's orders and tried to shut us down. Jen Rubin of the Washington Post wrote this, quote, he is insane, <laughs> meaning this show. Fox News is not a news organization. That is all. Noah Rothman of Commentary called this show nothing less than undiluted Russian propaganda. <laughs> Because <laughs> we're defending Assad, who, by the way, saved a huge numbers of Christians in Syria, but we're not allowed to care about that or think it's significant. Anyway, that was the media climate on April 14th, 2018, when the U.S., along with France and the U.K., bombed Syria. Now, a year later, in March of 2019, the world's chemical weapons watchdog weighed in. According to a final report from the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, there were, quote, reasonable grounds to conclude that, quote, the use of a toxic chemical as a weapon took place. Now, the Pentagon claimed that that report vindicated their decision to kill people in Syria, something they would go on to do quite a bit more in the future, including just recently under this new administration. But two OPCW investigators who went to Syria, Ian Henderson and Brendan Whelan, objected to that initial report. Now, according to the Courage Foundation, an organization that represents whistleblowers, several former OPCW investigators and high-level officials, and this is fascinating, are calling its conclusions invalid. Specifically, they're alleging that the investigation was scientifically biased, that it was improper, and that it was unethical. And we should be clear about this. These are not partisan actors. These are people who have worked with the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons since it was founded. They were involved in developing the protocols and the procedures that the watchdog uses to investigate the use of chemical weapons. One of them, Jose Bustamante, was the first director general of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. So they're not lightweights. They're not just celebrities weighing in on this. These are people who do it for a living. And according to investigators, officials at the OPCW switched their findings secretly just hours before it was due for publication. The investigators had said there was no evidence of a chemical attack in Syria. But their interim report was edited to state that chlorine gas had, in fact, been used. Afterward, according to the investigators, OPCW officials continued to compromise the investigation by ignoring scientific procedures and scientific methods as they barreled toward their preconceived conclusion that there had been, in fact, a chemical weapons attack in Syria. And so, of course, the Syrians deserved it. The investigators are now asking for an open forum to fix the errors in report but they're not getting it. Instead, the OPCW is attacking them in public, and that's what happens when you ask the questions that the people in charge don't want to answer. Now, this isn't just an important issue because of what happened in 2018. If the Pentagon and our media can lie about pretext in order to justify bombing sovereign countries and get away with it, then they will do it again. And that should concern you. Aaron Mate is a journalist with The Gray Zone. He's been covering the story from the very beginning unlike everyone else, and he joins us tonight to assess. Aaron, thanks so much for coming on. It sounds like 
they, you know, they threw this back in the face of, of certainly of you and of this show. Oh, we were right all along. It sounds like this report really was compromised. Tucker, first of all, thanks for having me and for covering this global scandal, which has not gotten the attention that it deserves. The facts here are overwhelming. The original OPCW team that went to Syria did not find any evidence of a chemical weapons attack in Douma. They wrote up their findings in a report. That report was suppressed and kept from the public. They were then removed from the investigation and replaced by officials who had never set foot in Syria, who then put out a final report that excluded the key scientific findings of the original team and reached unsupported conclusions. And this is not just an allegation from two whistleblowers, it's documented in a damning series of leaks that have come out. Uh, they were given to WikiLeaks. We've gotten some, too, at the gray zone. And they show in great detail what happened here, what a cover-up this was, and anybody can see the facts for themselves. Now, instead of grappling with these facts, the OPCW, as you said, has attacked these whistleblowers. At the UN Security Council, when Jose Bustani, the former OPCW chief, came to speak out in support of these dissenting inspectors, the U.S. and its allies blocked him from speaking. So when you won't let the actual scientists speak, when you won't let their evidence be weighed, and when you're preventing top officials like Mr. Bustani from speaking at the U.N. Security Council, it tells you something. It tells you that there is something to hide. It's a cover-up. And that is why this week this letter came out featuring a number of prominent signatories, Daniel Ellsberg, Noam Chomsky, Tulsi Gabbard, Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson, as well as five former OPCW officials calling this out. And the reason why, as you say, these lies can lead to war. We know the consequences from the Iraq, yes. from the Iraq war of going to war based on lies. And even now today, these allegations of chemical attacks in Syria are being used to justify the ongoing U.S. military occupation there and the sanctions that are destroying Syria, preventing the import of food and medicine, destroying Syria's economy, preventing it from rebuilding. And that is not good for Syrians. It's not good for Americans. It's only good for warmongers in Washington. I completely agree. And the, as you're talking, I'm thinking, why is this left to Aaron Mate in the gray zone to report? Where's the New York Times in this? But I'm, I'm grateful that you have, and I'm, and I'm glad you came <laughs> on tonight. Aaron, thank you. Thank so you, one of the people who was hammered with these lies, in fact, had her run for president, essentially derailed by them, is Tulsi Gabbard, the former congresswoman from Hawaii. She's been telling the truth since the beginning. She's been attacked for it. And now she joins, she joins us to look back on that experience. Congresswoman, thanks so much for coming on. I remember when you were running for president again and again. You're an apologist for a man who used chemical weapons against his own people. How, how do you think about that now that the truth is emerging? Uh, well, when this was all happening, Tucker, I was asking the same question that you were. Where is the evidence? Where is the evidence that would provide the basis for the U.S. to launch a military strike against Syria. And that evidence was never presented. And it's very clear now, as time has gone on, that uh, there was a cover-up. And why was there a cover-up? It became very clear that uh, this, this OPCW report, the final report, was tailored before it was actually released in order to provide cover for that unconstitutional military strike that the United States launched against Syria in April of 2018. And, and really what's at stake here is um, the credibility of, of this international organization, the OPCW, that people are supposed to be able to trust to be a neutral entity, to provide objective facts based on what their investigators have found on the ground. And it's very clear that that did not happen in this instance. And the impact of this is not only the credibility of this investigation into this, this uh, alleged uh, chemical weapons attack in Douma in Syria, but it will impact and undermine the credibility of all past reports and investigations from the OPCW, as well as any future uh, reports and investigations they conduct. It begs and calls into question their very integrity. Everything you said is absolutely true. It doesn't answer the question I've been mulling over for about five years now. Why is this the third rail? Of all the things you could have said and, you know, gotten away with effectively, the one thing they couldn't handle was calling into question a missile strike in Syria. Why was that such a sensitive subject for so many in Washington? 
Uh, well, look, you know, you look at look at the warmongers and the different countries that have been involved, and you see everyone coming together. Not, not unlike what happened uh, with the war in Iraq, where people were criticized then for merely asking questions about these alleged weapons of mass destruction, the evidence that was used as a, uh, the so-called evidence that was used as an excuse uh, to go to war. So you look at the people who benefit from this ongoing, continued regime change war uh, in Syria, and, and you can kind of start to connect the dots about why. Uh, merely asking the question of, hey, where is the evidence? If you're right. going to send our service members out to conduct a mission and use American taxpayer dollars to do it, an unconstitutional military strike on another country, you think you'd want to have the evidence to be able to back up such a serious, serious action. And, and really, at this point, the only way we can move forward in a constructive way is for the OPCW to do exactly what we are calling for in this letter, provide open, transparent forum in order for these investigators to be able to really examine all of the facts that were put together and put them forward for the public. Really quick, because I can't resist, in a functioning country, or, or if you want your country to function, don't you want responsible adults in positions of authority to step forward at critical moments, like before you send bombs in, to say, hold, hold so now, do we have the evidence? Isn't that, what you, isn't that the system that you want? I will tell you, Tucker, as a soldier and as a veteran and twice deployed to the Middle East, that is exactly the kind of system and leadership that we want. Uh, yeah. This is one of the reasons why I ran for president, because that responsibility that the commander-in-chief has in moments like this to make the right decisions, to ask the tough questions, that's the kind of leadership and judgment that the American people deserve. Yeah, and don't have. Tulsi Gabbard, it's great to see you tonight. Thank you. Thank you.